The Jurassic Park franchise has been going on for over 30 years, and in those 30 years, they've established a lot of lore for the franchise. But I think today, I've come up with a theory that I don't think anyone else has ever talked about. Now, a lot of people right now are probably theorizing about Dominion, the newest film that is set to release in 2022. And I myself have a lot of thoughts and opinions so far about Dominion myself and a couple of theories. But I still think that the older films still have some worthy theories that need to be talked about. So welcome back Jurassic Park fans and fellow Game Wardens. Because today we'll be looking into the topic of what if the Jurassic Park dinosaurs actually inherited amphibian traits when they were being cloned. But before we get into this video guys, make sure you all like and subscribe for more videos and make sure you ring that little notification bell. But now let's get into the video. Now some of you guys might be thinking, where is the evidence to support this claim and what made you think that this could even be true? Well, I was talking with my dad a couple days ago about Jurassic Park and he proposed the idea, what if the dinosaurs inherited amphibian traits went from the frogs? And the more I thought about it, the more evidence I started to pile up, so much evidence that I had to make a theory on this. Now I'm sure everybody watching this video knows why frog DNA was needed for the dinosaurs, but why exactly was it frog DNA? Why wasn't it reptiles? You know, I would have thought if you'd want to make a T-Rex, why not use Komodo dragon DNA? Why not use uh, bearded dragon DNA? But for some reason, they decided to use amphibians. Supposedly, this was for solely for plot purposes only. So that way they could have the excuse for the whole switching gender dinosaurs thing. Alright, but what does any of this have to do with the dinosaurs? Well, frogs absorb water through their skin. They don't drink it through their mouths like a lot of other animals. And I noticed that throughout all of the films, a good majority of all of the dino attacks take place at night or they take place when it's raining. Don't believe me? Well, there's the iconic T-Rex attack from the first movie. You got the Dilophosaurus attack from the first movie. You've got the T-Rex chasing all of the hunters in the second movie. You have countless times where it's taking place at night. And then the final battle for Fallen Kingdom and the final battle for Jurassic World both take place at night. The raptor attack in the Lost World also takes place at night. The tall grass incident also takes place at night. The San Diego incident also takes place at night. What does this have to do with the frogs? Well, frogs are most active at night because there's not a lot of predators and that's when they are always active. Now in the first movie, we do not see any of the predators until it's nighttime and when it's raining. But why is that? We do see one of the Triceratops in the movie when it's sick outside during the day. But why is it that we usually see the herbivores out during the day and we always see the carnivores at night? You pay very close attention to this. The herbivores are not usually around at night. They are always active during the day. But why is that? Why is it that we only see predators at night when it's raining? And why is it that we see the herbivores out and about during the day? Well, frogs stay hidden during the day and come out at night to get the moisture that they need from water. Okay, but if this was true and the dinosaurs did have this trait from the frogs, why don't the herbivores have the same thing? Well, because they're getting the water from the leaves that they eat. All of this kind of talk reminds me a lot from the Michael Crichton novels because a lot of talk about ecosystems and evolution is in that book. There's a lot of talk about that stuff. But if all of this is true about the herbivores getting water from the plants that they eat, why do the carnivores have to come out at night to get water? Well, if you think about it, the herbivores can get water from the plants and from the rainfall that comes down, but the carnivores can't get water from the animals that they eat. They can only get the water from rivers, streams, watering holes, and ponds. But who's to say that in their enclosures, Maybe they don't have enough water, but the herbivores can get all the water that they need from the plants that they're eating, plus all of the other sources of water like watering holes and rivers. 
But if all of you remember, I said earlier that frogs can only get water through their skin and they can't open their mouths. So would this apply to the dinosaurs as well? Well, no, not exactly. You see, there are animals in the animal kingdom that can get water from their skin and from their mouth. The thorny devil is a lizard that can be found in Australia, and this lizard has the very unique ability of being able to absorb raindrops onto its skin and then sending the rain water to its mouth. Yes, this is an actual animal. But according to my research, this animal cannot actually drink water through its mouth, but it can only send water from its back onto its mouth. I don't know if that makes sense, but its mouth is sort of covered up with a huge tongue that's used to grab ants, so it can't actually drink water normally. So it sends all of the water it receives onto its back and sends it to its mouth instead. I don't know if that makes sense. Now, I wasn't going to talk about Camp Cretaceous in this video, but I figured I might as well mention this really quick. I did notice that a lot of the carnivores were walking around during the day, but I did notice that they were trying to stay in the shady areas. And they were probably trying to look for watering holes or any other places that they could have gotten some water instead of having to rely on the rain. Now, I also did notice that the Scorpius Rex, the new hybrid for Camp Cretaceous, did go crazy when it was out in the rain. And now I remember last second that in Cape Cretaceous, Kenji and Darius find a watering hole where carnivores and herbivores drink in peace and they don't have to worry about each other because there's kind of a mutual understanding there. Now, this is also pretty good evidence to suggest that there's not a lot of rivers in Jurassic World or a lot of good places where they can get good fresh water. Now, this is also really good because this tells us that they have to go to the watering hole. Another thing from Camp Cretaceous that is pretty easy to forget is that it takes place during the summer. And you'll notice that there's not a lot of rain on Nublar during Camp Cretaceous Season 1 and 2. So in Season 3, it seems like they had been there for a couple months. And so it's finally hurricane season. And that's when it starts raining towards the end of Season 3. So this is another little bonus detail that you guys might notice. So maybe that's why they were all going toward the watering hole. Because there was no place for them to get water from the rain. But guys, I think that's going to be it for today's video. Ma thank you guys so much for watching. Today, I had such a great time making this new video because I finally get to use this editing app to its full capacity. And let me know what you guys like to see in the future. Let me know if you guys would agree with my theory that maybe the dinosaurs did inherit some of those in amphibian DNA traits from the, from the frogs. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe for more videos. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you don't like either of those two conditions, you're on your own.